You're watching Do You Nerd. Hope you have some fun. We'll be right with you. Hey, nerdlings! What up, nerdlings? Do you nerd for conventions? Because let me tell you, if you do not, this has been the wrong channel for you these past couple of weeks. Thank you very much for being patient and sticking with us. All right, so obviously we got to go to VisionCon 2019 right here in Springfield, Missouri, which was so much easier for us than being down. In that Branson. that was pretty nice. <laughs> um, you know, yeah, you wake up, you drive across town, you're there, boom like that got to sleep in my own bed <laughs> <laughs> now if you have been watching then you have seen all kinds of videos of interviews and panels and all kinds of things that we had done there and now it's time to just talk about the convention itself mm -hmm. and give you a little look at the floor so first of all we would like to extend a thank you to the people at VisionCon who set us up with some press passes that got us in there, not only to the convention itself, but into talk to some of the mm -hmm. celebrities and guest stars that they had. And that was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. It was nice to be able to talk to somebody without a whole lot of convention noise. Mm -hmm. um, it was a smaller room, so we didn't have to deal with other interviewee mm -hmm. noises. But that's, you know... I'm sure people deal with that in press junkets all the time. So, but we are very, very thankful that we got the opportunity to be able to do that. And it was very nice. Also nerve wracking though. A little bit. <laughs> uh, because yeah, we have been working like crazy to get all these videos together because we definitely wanted to get the most out of this convention. Mm -hmm. That being said, obviously we couldn't hit up everything. Starting with the interviews, the first day we went, we got there early to talk to some of the guest stars, and we got to talk to Mr. George Lowe of Space Ghost Voice Fame. Uh, and, and a bunch of other voice fame, too. Oh, yeah. Too. <laughs> yeah, and one of your favorites, your your kindred redhead spirit. I know, our fellow Springfieldian, Dana Powell. That was a lot of fun to get to talk to her. She's super nice, super sweet. It's super enjoyable when Hollywood doesn't turn someone into something scary. <laughs> They're still humble and nice. And uh, we had time to talk to a couple of awesome cosplayers in mm -hmm. there as well, including Lars Van Crafter, who knocks it out of the who park so with his Daryl Dixon and Norman Reedus cosplays. Yes, and my my friend Bruce Holt, <laughs> I, we really enjoy getting to talk to him, and sometimes you can't, you know, you just chit chat there's just no interview to be done there's just chit chatting going on so unfortunately we didn't get a chance to talk to everybody in there because everyone was trying to be respectful uh, all the people that had press passes mm -hmm. and kind of move around and get their one-on-one -on -one time and then you know go to the next guest star yeah so uh you know it didn't quite work out as far as having enough time but you know it was awesome getting to talk to the people that we did because it mm -hmm. was so much fun yeah something very nice about vision con the way it was set up at the Springfield Expo Center. Oh man, they had plenty of space. They did, and they were able to spread out, which yes. was so nice. You didn't feel cramped or anything. Yeah, none of the aisles were really cramped or anything. You weren't shoulder to shoulder with people all yeah. the time. And the way that things were spread out, they really made great use of their of their floor space. Which, let's face it, sometimes when you've got some of those costumes, you need space to get by <laughs> people. Yes, yes you some do. of those impressive, huge costumes. Now, right when we left the panel room where we got to interview the guest stars, there was an amazing Lego uh, set up on display. I, yeah, I think he had to actually pull me away from it Pretty to much. see the rest of the convention. Because he's like, this is literally right here at the first let's go see the rest of the convention and i was like but no look at this and this and this so right off the bat at the very beginning of this whole like little town world was hogwarts and that was really really cool because those are the sets i'm actually trying to collect at the moment i'm not a very you know like avid lego collector i just collect sets that i like but obviously huge harry potter fan so i want to collect those sets so it was kind of neat to see sets that i've already put together to see how you know they're displaying them which is kind of the way I'm doing it, where I've got my new case closed with the people sitting on top of it. That's kind of what they did, too. And then to see, you know, the big Hogwarts um, school built and put together and everything. One thing I didn't know about it until this was, is since it's a big Hogwarts school, they had little tiny Lego figures in it. 
to like for scale, which I thought was kind of neat. I didn't that expect that. Clever. I didn't. I didn't notice that. I guess on the outside of the box. But then you know I haven't put my train together yet. But that was also fun to get to see put together for the train, and it just makes me even more excited to just to continue to get the whole set. Something I thought was particularly clever was the fact that they had a little bit of a town area set up. And what they did was they mishmashed all kinds they, of things. They did, yeah. So you might see some Avengers in there. Uh, you might see the TARDIS just hanging out. You might even see a certain building where a couple of Ghostbusters might hang out all the time. It was really neat to actually see something like that done in person because you're always trying to get me to do that anyway, like get like a card table and put all my different sets together. But I'm kind of more of a visual person, so being able to see it done where they just mishmashed all these sets together really made me go, oh, you're right, I should do that. And yes, you heard me on camera. I said you were right. I don't believe it. Finally, I can do this. I set that thing up 15 years ago. Now, the roads were kind of what sold you they on were. They were. They were really cool. I like the fact that they were Lego pieces, but there was roads in the middle of it, so it really did bring the town kind of together. Because I do have some Lego car stuff, so that's kind of neat to be able to put it on the roads. And another thing that you really liked was the whole pirate area. I do, because I love pirates. I, I've always been obsessed with pirates and fascinated by them. And so to see the pirate sets put together was kind of neat. And the other neat thing about it was kind of mixed matched into the pirate stuff were other Lego figs, which is, I kind of liked that. Like, there was obviously Captain Jack Sparrow, so it's like, is that a, a Captain Jack pirate ship or is it the regular pirate ship that they stuck him on? But then there was like this like headhunter village that they had put together and there was C-3PO in there like from Endor or um, in one of the castles was Marty McFly and so you know they kind of just threw some random Lego figs in there so I thought that's kind of neat that's kind of what I want to do too. Yeah there were all kinds of Easter eggs in that. Yeah there was one that was I mean it sounds kind of morbid but I kind of got a kick out of the guy that was being hanged because you know he had a little noose around his neck and I was like oh. Is that gonna work? Because you know, if he's Lego stuck to the thing, if the <laughs> the trap door's trap not gonna door let just, him go. Yeah, so it's like, is that gonna work? But I thought that was kind of neat. They also had some fun specific sets uh, put together, like the Vision Con logo, they which was did. very neat. They did. They had the Vision Con logo. They had um, some Minecraft ones already done, which is kind of fascinating to see because it was layered. So there was like the above ground and below ground. one of our favorite places that we like to go. The Alamo! They made an Alamo theater, which is really cool. And it was kind of almost movie party-esque because they just had tons of random Lego minifigs sitting in all the booths that, or the the theater seats and everything. And, and that, you can see that the tables have all kinds of goodies on them as well. Yeah, I gotta say, if I can figure out how to build one of those, I think I want to build myself an Alamo theater. Now, in this same area, you also had a chance to check out Captain America's motorcycle. Uh, the thing that I thought was cool about it was they were like, take a picture of it, take a picture with it, get on it and take a picture. <laughs> so it's like you don't see too many things where they're offering you to get on a prop. So that was really cool. So I, I, I had to get on there and get my picture taken on Cap's bike and I think we got you get on there with the Cap's bike too. And if you happen to be a Smokey and the Bandit fan, they had the Eastbound and Down guys on scene. Now, I never really was a big fan of Smokey and the Bandit. I didn't watch it all that much, but I was familiar enough with it to know that they did a pretty damn good oh, job. Oh, yeah, they looked awesome. And in this area was kind of where they put some of the cosplaying uh, special guests. And so they had Bruce's panel and he had all of his very impressive builds in there and everything and some pictures of some of the builds that he had done. And he was around his booth most of the day so that he could answer questions or talk to people and whatever. And so that's always, it was always fun. I love seeing Bruce's booth. And people took advantage of that. We saw a guy that was in an impressive 
suit of armor uh -huh. and he was talking to Bruce and Bruce had nothing but great things oh, to say yeah. to him. And in fact, I think Bruce even kind of called him over and he's like, let me take a look at that. And something that kind of impressed me was as Bruce and I were both talking to this guy about his build, he just whips out this like laminated uh, scroll from underneath his armor. With, and it was pictures of his build in progress. I thought that was kind of neat. I was like, huh, you're kind of like one of those ac actual video game characters where they just pull something out, you know, and you're like, where'd you have that? <laughs> the other thing that I like that we've seen at Vision Con and Branson Con is Bruce does also have another booth aside from his actual cosplaying booth with just leather pieces, which I always think that's kind of neat because if you're, you know, working on a piece or whatever, or you think you want to work on a piece, you can buy the leather right then and there. You don't yeah, have to go find the materials it somewhere. On hand. And with someone like Bruce who, you know, does build and knows these things, you can ask him questions and get the right amount of materials. So that's always neat. And of course, this is also where you could find Lars Van Crafter. And once he was dressed up as Daryl, he was all too happy to take some photos with you in front of the don't dead open inside doors. <laughs> One thing I liked about his area was it was really cool because it was very much set up for photo ops because obviously he had that background, but he also had a bunch of other really neat just kind of props lying around that you could or could not have paid attention to. Like he had a baby with a onesie on that said little ass kicker, which is, you know, what he called Judith. He had, um, the uh, mop and bucket from when he was at the sanctuary dealing with, you know, not so great stuff. He had the jar of peanut butter. So just lots of cute little touches. Leaving that area brought you into the main entrance of the expo center and the stairwell took you down into the main hallway. Mm -hmm. Now before you went into any of the vendor rooms or artist rooms, they had some uh, nice booths set up here. This was where you could find the Springfield hooligans and mm -hmm. of course they were on hand with their TARDIS. Yep, so you can do, um, again, fun photo ops and a lot of them were cosplaying as different doctors and companions so that was kind of neat one of the booths that we've ran into quite a few times at a few conventions and other events is Better Together Creations. Now they always have a lot of cool stuff on hand but amazing things with wood. This year I think they might have topped it because they had a very special item you could pick up. Yep for five dollars you can buy yourself this lovely plastic Vision Con cup all weekend long as long as you went to the special um, concessions booth you got free refills and they have a place for you to write your name so of course we wrote do you nerd on there so they'd know whose cup was whose this was the perfect place to congregate and meet up with some of your friends whether they're friends that came to the convention with you or the friends that you made here uh it was also a fantastic place to see all kinds of cosplayers out oh in the yeah open. yeah Upstairs, by the entryway, there was also a cafe put on by the Kira Kira Girls of Springfield. And so not only would you get to go in there and, you know, have a little grub, have some drinks, but the Kira Kira Girls were on hand to perform and there was even some karaoke going on. Just beyond this hallway, they had a huge area dedicated to yeah. some tabletop gaming. And it looked like they had some games on hand to mm -hmm. try, and I'm pretty sure you could probably bring some of your own yep. if you wanted to. Yep. This was a great place to try new games or meet up with people with like-minded interests, meet new people that you want to play board games with. 
this was also the area that they had um, the LARPing in. Oh man, they were having a lot of fun over there. So once we got through all of that, the first place we went into was the artist's room. And there was a lot of great stuff to check out here. I think we spent a lot of time did, flipping yeah. through some portfolio books mm -hmm. to check out all the all the goodies that they had. Not just artists. Um, there was also comic book artists there. So it wasn't yes. just, you know, the big print pictures or whatever. You could... There was some, some local uh, comic book artists that were that would ink and write their own books and everything. So that was always fun. We always like to check out authors and, and stuff like that. Oh yeah, support your local talent. One of my new favorite booths that I did not know was going to be a favorite of mine. Welcome to Dragonfly Studios. We have uh, Bonsai Dragons, Potion Charms, Pixie Poops, Magic Wands. Yeah. Come on down to where imagination grows here at Dragonfly Studios, Udo Lolly. That's great. All our wands come with certificates of authenticity signed by the president of Dragonfly Studio and the wand crafter, detailing what magical materials they're made of and what magics they're good for. All our potion ingredients come with little scrolls detailing where we got them and what they do. No magical creatures were harmed in their creation, we guarantee it. And uh, we've been offering a kit for a little while now, our student wizard kit with a beginner wand, any two potion ingredients, a keychain familiar, and a cauldron, ordinarily a $25 volume, together to date, 15 Of course, if as so often happens, one of our journeymen, our master, or even unique wands speaks to you more than our beginner wands, we can easily upgrade the kit for 5 10 or even 15 additional dollars. That's no problem. They had some awesome, cute, whimsical, Creations. Over here we have our adoptable pixie boots. They come with an adoption certificate. Our posable uh, pet doll coattles. They're built on a steel wire frame. They're as durable as they are posable. They wrap around your shoulder or your arm. And of course, our brass bound faux leather journal and notebook covers. Real brass features. Each of them uh, is over a notebook. You can get them for a dollar or even up to three for a dollar at any big box store. That's our queen, she's $200. Everything is hand sewn, each bead, each sequin put on by hand. Individual handmade faces. And it's not painted, that's the color of the clay. I blend the clay to look like that. Game Guardians, even little writing quills, they really work. I've been using one in my ledger since last March. Same one since last March. They can't last forever, but this one's been doing me good. <laughs> now going back to uh, the local talent, yeah. we did find a brand new comic. We will show it off a little better in the pickup video, but uh, real quick. The paranormal was it misadventures of Zombie I Dave? Think so. It's it's got quite a title. It does. But uh, we got to talk to the creator of that, and this is going to be a fun series. I think you mm -hmm. already blazed through. I've the first already read book. the first one, and I'm definitely looking forward to the next time we see him pick up all the rest of the comics of it. And it's also fun, you know, when you pick them up at these things, you can get them signed. Yes. And we also met the creator of Pot Belly Mammoth, who, if you will recall. I ran into him during Free Comic Book Day, mm -hmm. and I got this lovely lady a fantastic sketch of... Spider-Gwen! 
I love her. We've actually run into them a couple of times. We've seen them at a couple of conventions and um, library con. So it's always fun to see returning faces. Oh yeah, you gotta have your con friends. Now within the artist room, this is also where they kind of uh, halved the room because yeah. the back part of it was the main stage for all of the uh, the guest stars that they had on hand. So the Q and A's and and the bigger panels. Which I actually like that they put it in a separate room from the con floor because then you don't have the noise bleed over. Yeah. You're not in the con floor and you're hearing what's going on in the in the panel area and it kind of distracts you, especially if you're trying to do talk to other people and vice versa. You don't have the con noise when you're trying to listen to a panel of Q&As or stuff like that because sometimes it's hard enough to hear what questions are asked from the audience when they get to them with a the microphone. <laughs> That's true. So it is nice to not have that extra noise. So I really liked that. Okay, now we're on to the vendor floor. And uh, I'm surprised I was even able to keep track of her here. Well, the funny thing is, is right when you look through the doors, there was a big old thing of swords. And I thought, okay, this is going to distract me. But as I walked in, I happened to look over and there was a booth with nothing but Star Trek. And they had so much stuff. I believe it was a 40-year collection. Yes. Yeah, the guy who owned it used to work at the Star Trek Experience in Las Vegas, which I had the pleasure of being able to to go and enjoy that, but it was gone by the time you ever got to Vegas. So Thanks I do, for rubbing it in. I do apologize for that, but I am super, super thrilled that I got to see it. And this was that guy's collection. He sold the whole thing off and these guys bought it. And they have they even said they couldn't even begin to show what they've got in storage what based on what was in their booth and they had some really neat stuff really great prices of everything didn't they get rid of the experience it's gone. yeah every bit of it's gone except the casino and they, they, because it's part of the building they can't get rid of it there you go great take thanks if you ever make it out there and it's still there yeah we uh i used to go play in it every year because i'm a huge trekkie and it just they Vegas changes all the time, yeah. like every 10 years, and they just decided they sold the entire thing off. Thank you. The brand, I mean, they had rides, they had everything, and I was so upset. They used to have the convention, the Star Trek convention there every year. It was always on my birthday. Vegas is not the best place to go. And uh, we also got some tickets, didn't we? Maybe, maybe. You guys will have to watch the pickup video to see. Now going down the aisle, there were lots of other things to see. Mm -hmm. Some uh, some cool nerdy stuff. Uh, there was a booth full of all kinds of shiny stuff yes. that uh, drew you in, like the magpie that you are. Yeah. And fairly close to them were actually our friends from, was it the Central Missouri? Central Green Missouri Fest? Oak, Heart, Oak Heart Armory. They're always fun because they do foam weapons, and I'm super duper obsessed with foam weapons. If you've watched any of our other videos, you know. And uh, She likes the foam weapons because they don't leave bruises. That's not nice. <laughs> Oak Heart Armory is not her only favorite booth, though, because you have about a hundred favorite booths. I do. But the next one would definitely be... From another favorite uh, Renaissance Festival, a mandolin chainmail. I find the pretty. 
I first met her at the Kansas City Ren Fair. And so then it was kind of fun to see her outside of her element in conventions. And so we, we've seen her at Vision Con and Branson Con both. And it's always fun because then I don't have to wait for Kansas City <laughs> to get my chainmail fix on. So it's always a good to see her and get to talk to her. So I'm Amanda O'Leary with Mandolin Chainmail. My husband and I own our business, so we do all the work ourselves. It's all custom built chainmail jewelry, scale mail armor, which we specialize in um, superhero items. And then we also do um, some unique pieces that you won't find anywhere else. And top of that, we do plaques and coasters that are made from comic books and art books and magazines that are just upcycled home decor. So you can bring little pieces of art that might be lost otherwise into your homework. So that's basically what we do. And where's the best place to find you? You can find us on Facebook and Instagram. If you search for Amanda and Chainmail, you can also, if you Google Amanda and Chainmail or any kind of um, superhero scale mail, you will find us immediately. Awesome. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you so much. All right. So next on the floor was probably one of the coolest booths. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm a sucker for treats anyway. She's a sucker for Harry Potter Harry stuff. Potter. You mix that together and you get. Which was an amazing booth. Totally impressive. Um, one of the first things I asked them was if they had a storefront somewhere because just the whole look of the booth was so put together and so professional. The props that they were using, the displays they were using, the the way that they were, um, the, the candies um, in their packaging oh, was yeah. just so professional looking. They even had a cash register. <laughs> And, of course, they were dressing up to go along mm -hmm. with it, which was just perfect. Yes. And really lent itself well to, you know, looking at all of the chocolate frogs and golden sneeches and stuff like that. Oh, man. Yeah. It was awesome. That being said, though, when I asked them if they had a storefront, they said, no, they just do the convention circuit. And they just make them at home and, and sell stuff at conventions. It was, so it was really impressive because it's, it's one of those things they were good enough to look like a have their own store. And a lot of clever little things too, uh, even if it wasn't like a homemade candy, mm -hmm. but uh, things like the lemon drops, yeah, stuff like that. I mean, they just had a real good eye for blending candies into yeah. the Harry Potter world. Mm -hmm. Now, once in a while, some of the booths did have some comic books on hand, and fortunately, we uh, learned about a new comic book shop here in our hometown. So that is one that we are going to have to check out. Yes, we're definitely going to have to do that. Hopefully, we will find some good stuff there, too. Now, we were seeing some pretty good anime stuff to buy mm -hmm. as well. And there was one booth in particular that had a great collection of yeah, little figurines. Did. Now, I did go ahead and record beforehand, so I'm going to show that. But the rest of the booth, when I asked them if they minded us recording, they did ask us not to for the rest of it. So we went ahead and respected that. And I just want to throw that out there. Here is a pro con tip a pro convention tip yeah. for you yeah the main reason he didn't want us to film it was the the stuff he didn't really want us to film was um his uh son and daughter-in-law do a lot of uh original art and so he was afraid that it would get out there and someone would try to steal it so that was the stuff he didn't want us to film right so uh again there's your tip ask for permission before you film some of these booths most of the time the people don't have a problem with yeah. it especially if it's getting them a little bit of notoriety right, they've got like there. an etsy shop and they exactly. want people to see and want to buy it from somebody but if it is a booth that they do not want you to film be sure to be kind and be respectful mm -hmm. and you know don't include that exactly all right now uh, one of the things that you got to do at a at a convention is get something to eat mm -hmm. now we had shown you the cup from earlier and that booth that concession booth actually only did drinks mm -hmm. so there was only one concession booth to get something to eat it's time. i actually have another convention pro tip for you here should you decide to get something to eat from a concession booth and they do have some tables set up there do not be afraid to ask some people if they have space at their table yeah. to join them or to let people join you. Uh, sometimes space can be an issue, so yeah. it's and nice. It's a great way to 
have like a conversation starter about, you know, do you mind if I sit with you? Oh, no problem. Hey, I really like your costume. Tell me a little bit about it. Or, you know, oh, do you like this fandom or whatever? So it's a great way of like mingling and, you know, just kind of mixing in, especially if you're a little shy and you don't know how to do that icebreaker. It's a great icebreaker. Yeah, because if you don't have anything to say, just stuff your mouth full of food. Mm, that, then someone will definitely want to talk to you. And another great convention uh, returnee is uh, the 501st Legion from Star Wars. The We've seen them at a couple of different conventions yeah. at Branson Con, Vision Con, um, and they're always a great like club that you know there's no dues or anything that you have to pay. Just have a good Star Wars costume, and uh, they do a lot of charitable works. They do a lot of appearances, so they're kind of neat. And they're also the ones who always have the R two D twos that run around. Oh man, they have so much fun with them, and especially the kids. The oh, kids yeah. love playing with the R2 unit. And they actually had the con jail set up, too. So they did. So if one of your buddies was, uh, you know, deserving of a little jail time, that's where you would take them. What's <laughs> up? Are you filming or picturing? Yes. Okay. Yes, yes on. <laughs> And of course, there was the row with all of the guest stars and the celebrities. Uh, everyone from Jewel and George to Dana and all of the cosplay guests. And this was the place that you would go and get an autograph from them, talk mm -hmm. to them, maybe get a selfie if you're lucky. <laughs> and uh, yeah, this was the perfect place to group them all together. Something that I thought was kind of fun was we were walking kind of away from that area and George Lowe was on his way, I think, to the bathroom or something. And he walks by and he goes, hey! Tom! And we were like, yeah! And he goes, and then as he's walking away, he goes, I can't believe I remembered that! <laughs> so that, that was kind of fun. I guess maybe we left an impression on I him. Left, I left the lasting impression on Space Ghost. <laughs> do you nerd? Oh, I like that. Do you nerd? We all nerd, do we not? <laughs> so I have one more pro convention tip for you. Now this is just kind of a general tip. Mm -hmm. Whenever you are checking out some of the merch in the booths, you need to have a little bit of a buyer beware mentality. Yeah. Sometimes there are things that can be a little marked up and it is worth your while to maybe know what you're getting into if uh -huh. you're looking for anything from figures to comics to collectibles, but uh, it's always a good idea. I'm not saying that the vendors are out to rip anyone off, but keep in mind that a lot of these people do travel the convention circuit. So in one area, something might be going for a little more, mm -hmm. and maybe in your area, you can find it a little less. And it's just kind of a good tip to be mindful of your money, because after all, there's a lot of booths there, and you don't want to drop all of your money at just one of them, unless it's really cool. <laughs> one of my pro con tips would definitely be don't by the first thing you see. Basically, the thing that we like to do a lot, and I know probably all the vendors don't believe us, is we always go to the entire floor before we're finished. Do that round. Yes, we want to make sure that we have seen everything so that we can mentally take notes or physically take notes if you want to of everything that you see that you want to buy so you can add it up in your head because you know sometimes money can be tight. You don't necessarily can take as much funds as you want to conventions. I know I sure can't. But uh, you want to be able to make sure you get the stuff you want. So you always want to just kind of look at stuff and then come back later. Give it time to think and mull it over because impulse buys aren't always the best. All right, another one of the booths that I fell in love with was a lady by, who goes by the name of Dungeon Craft. She has some really neat um, like bags and purses that she sews and they're really good quality, really neat, a lot of fun patterns of nerdy stuff on it. But what actually really drew me to her was she had miniatures. And um, these were like miniature dungeons or like a little, she had a little town set up with like a, a blacksmith and some fruit stands and fish stands and everything and a big fountain in the middle of it. And I um, thought these might have been poured or something, but she actually told us they were 3D printed. Yeah. Which was so impressive. Was so mm -hmm. good on these. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't believe just uh, beyond the quality of the prints, the paint jobs that she yes. did on these. If you look close at the little pottery pieces, 
they are actually painted two-tone mm -hmm. and just the attention to detail like that was absolutely stunning yeah it was very impressive she said she basically started doing it because she liked to do D and and she wanted pieces for her D, D set and everything and so that's that's really neat it, you know it's kind of get you even more you know into the moment when you're playing with D, &D. so and she sells all those pieces and i did buy one of those pieces and you'll get to see a little closer upper of that in our uh, pickup video hi uh, I'm Kathy of Dungeon Craft. I sell 3D printed uh, tabletop accessories, anything you want to use for your Dungeons and Dragons, Pathfinder games. We 3D print uh, dungeons. They're modular. You can put them together. Um, also, there's caverns. There are miniatures, um, dice towers. Basically, anything that you're going to use for your Dungeons and Dragons games. Um, I have an Etsy store. It's Etsy uh, slash shop slash Dungeon Craft. And uh, we'll take custom orders or any orders on there. Um, we've been 3D printing for a little while. Um, kind of see everything paints up really well. And um, we'll be happy to help you out with your Dungeoneering needs. So another thing I wanted to point out was that VisionCon this year was actually using an app, and I believe other conventions are starting mm -hmm, to use mm -hmm. this as well, called Fan Guru. Yes, and it's a very handy app. It's really, really easy to navigate. And like he was saying, other conventions are using it, so I'm really hoping that some of the ones that are local for us is going to start using it too. But you basically would kind of click on the event you wanted and it put it into My Events. And then when you went to the My Events section, then you had the map, you had vendor lists, and you had um, all the event lists, and then you could basically check mark the events you wanted to attend, and then it would notify you of when your event would go off. So it would kind of send like a little reminder on your phone, which is very handy because sometimes you can get kind of wrapped up in these events and, and totally forget what's going on. Wrapped up in the events, and a lot of times there is some overlap. Mm -hmm. Certain things will be happening on one stage, whereas a panel that you're interested in is going on in one of the rooms. Yeah, and I did give a little description about what, what was going on in each event, so that's also really nice and handy. And the other thing is, if any kind of news or information was going on, it would also send you notifications of those. I actually think at one point they uh, somebody had lost something and it like came over. If you found such and such, I don't even remember what it was, please return it to lost and found. And I was like, well, that's kind of neat. That's very handy. <laughs> well, overall, I think that VisionCon 2019 was a lot of fun. So much they, fun. Uh, they had plenty of space. They utilized that space really, really well. Mm -hmm. They had a ton of vendors. They had some they really great artists and and uh, just craft creators mm -hmm. on hand. They had some excellent talent that they managed to get for the show. Yes. Of course, the cosplayers were amazing are, everywhere yeah. you looked. Um, they had some uh, bouncy castles and stuff, like the blow up things for the kids. There was actually a lot of kid friendly stuff. There at this were. Event. Some of the other things that we don't usually attend because we're too busy actually doing stuff on the floor, but they run movies all day. So, like, if you. Uh, you know, want to take a break from the con floor, but yes. you don't necessarily want to leave. They were running movies all day. You could, you know, if your kids are, you know, being like, I'm bored, I'm bored, take them to the movies. Maybe you've walked the floor a couple of times, mm -hmm. but you have a panel that doesn't start for another hour. Yeah. Hey, sitting down, watching a movie, that's the perfect way to pass yeah. the time. Yeah, there's always great things going on. I think this year was, was a great success. I really look forward to 2020 next year, and... I'm really looking forward to seeing the new talent that they're going to pull in there for next year and, you know, just seeing all the new costumes that people are going to come up with. I mean, I just, I can't wait. We would love for you to give the video a like if you happen to like it. And if you were at VisionCon, please leave some comments down below. We would love to know what you thought of uh, their illustrious return <laughs> to Springfield. And uh, please hit that notification bell, become a subscriber, and you know what? We may just have one more VisionCon video left for you. Yep. Don't forget to like us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram to see that one last thing coming and to see all the other great Do You Nerd stuff we've got coming your way after all this. And hit us up over on TeePublic. We've got merchandise for you nerdlings. If we like it. We nerd it.